this is Kevin for Pixavert.com. In this video, we're going to be recreating this sliding text in After Effects CS6. This is something you'll have seen in the intro to the last few videos that I've done. And what I want to do is just to cover the basics of working in ray traced 3D in After Effects. Now, this particular design lasts about three to four seconds, and it took about 15 minutes to put together about five minutes to render. If I wasn't using GPU acceleration, it would have taken maybe two or three hours to put together and to render. Now, it's not a perfect render. You can see some hot areas around here, around there. You can also see that the reflections aren't perfect. But with a bit more time, bit of effort, this could be polished up to look pretty neat. What I want to do in the next few videos is to cover the basics of the 3D ray tracer in Adobe After Effects. So we are going to start off by creating a new composition. I'm going to go to composition and choose new composition. Now I'm just going to create a 1920 by 1080 composition, 24 frames a second, 10 seconds, long, background color black. This is all the basic information. Let's call this composition tutorial one. And we are going to go to the advanced tab and here you can see we've chosen Ray Trace 3D. In order to extrude text like this, you do need the Ray Trace 3D option checked. And there's all kinds of stuff down here which I'm not gonna cover yet. And we'll go to the options and you can see that the ray tracing quality has been set to 11. Uh, we, sh we can drop that down to three. Uh, let's do that actually, let's, let's drop, drop it down to three. We can go all the way down to one, which is draft. But you can go up to 64, which I think is good if you're like, uh, you know, Pixar or Disney. Uh, I'll say 32 is NASA, 64 is D Disney or Pixar. But for us mere mortals, we need to stay with the lower numbers. Otherwise, it's just going to take forever to render. But you do get really stonking good quality, even with fairly low numbers here. Uh, we've also got anti-aliasing. I'm going to choose none for the time being, and I'm going to hit OK. When we hit OK, we get a new composition. I'm going to go to Layer and choose New, and just create a black background. We can turn that off later on. And there is our 1920 by 1080 composition. Now, the first thing I want to do is to type in some text. So we'll go to the Text tool, and here I've chosen this font here, Sego, <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it, Sego UI, bold. We're going to go for a size of 180 pixels and pretty much standard settings everywhere else. And we'll go back to our composition and we'll type in our text. And I'll bring up the move tool and just center this a little bit. Now, it's useful when you're working with 3D to have a camera. So we're going to create a new camera. And I'm just going to create a 35 millimeter preset. Uh, get a little warning there. I'm going to hit OK. What we need to do now to create the 3D text is to hit the 3D button, which is there. And uh, what that does is absolutely nothing, as you can see. Uh, we can take a camera, just hit C on the keyboard, and we can move our text around. And you can see that's definitely not 3D text. But if we open up the 3D text, what you'll find is that without the, three, without the 3D box ticked, we've got nothing except the text and the transform. And then with the 3D box ticked, we get these two options, which is geometry and material. These options allow us to extrude the text into a 3D object. And that's what we'll do now. We're going to start off with the extrusion depth, which is under geometry. And I'm just going to increase that to Let's take that up to around 550. Now, you'll see that things look weird and we can't see what's going on. So we need to create a light just to light up the world. So let's create a new light. I'm going to make it white with an intensity of 250%. Hit OK. And we've got things going on now. That lo that's looking a bit better. I'm just going to drag up the light. And what I'll do now is to work a little bit on our text. Let's just move the camera around. Get the text a little bit more centered. And a little bit more legible. Before you put in reflections, 
and other things you can actually work with fast draft and what that does is to work really really quickly and it allows you to render very quickly on the screen what I'm going to do now is to add some kind of bevel just to add a little bit of interest so I'm just going to go to the bevel style and that's not a geometry and we're going to choose uh, angular is the sort of really basic straightforward bevel let's take this all the way up to 10 we can also choose concave which is the most dramatic looking one most of the time and convex which is nice and soft I'm going to go with concave which is the last one that I used and we'll go for a bevel depth of 100 percent there's also a hole depth which affects these uh, little inserts inside some of the letters so you can either have a bevel there or you can take it out entirely and what we can do is to go to our text bring up the text tool select the text and we can experiment with different fonts it all updates very quickly and what we can also do is to change some of the other settings and you can also change the render settings there so that if you want to you can actually go down to wireframe which shows you nothing but works very quickly fast draft is a good place to work when you're beginning once you start adding reflections and other material options you probably want to go to one of the top three off means you get the final quality that means you get whatever ray trace quality option you've chosen if it's three you're gonna get three if it's 64 you're gonna get 64 draft always gives you a render quality of one but that's something you only want to do when things are running really slowly so what I'm gonna do is to stop there we're gonna come back with the next video and look at the material options which are down here I'm gonna do it.